How's it going, everybody? Will here. Happy Sunday, everyone. I hope you all have had the chance to go and check out the online worship service for the week. Uh, I do want to apologize for getting this video out a day late. I just was doing stuff yesterday and lost track of time, so that's my apology. But we're going to finish up the book of Amos today. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and dive on in and get started. Then I saw a vision of the Lord standing beside his altar. He said, strike the top of the columns of the temple so hard that the foundation will shake. Smash the columns so the roof will crash down on the people. Those who survive will be slaughtered in battle and no one will escape. Even if they dig down to the place of the dead, I will reach down and pull them up. Even if they climb up to the heavens, I will bring them down. Even if they hide at the top of Mount Carmel, I will search them out and capture them. Even if they hide at the bottom of the ocean, I will send the great serpent after them and bite them to des and destroy them. Even if they are driven into exile, I will command the sword to kill them. I am determined to bring disaster upon them and not help them at all. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, t touches the land and it melts, and all of the people mourn. The ground rises up like the Nile River at flood times and it sinks back down again. The upper stories of the Lord's home are in the heavens, while its foundation is on the earth. It draws, he draws water up from the oceans and pours it down as rain on the land, and the Lord is his name. Do the Israelites think that they are more important to me than the people of Ethiopians? The, than the Ethiopians? My apologies. Asked the Lord, I brought you out of Egypt, but did I not do as much for other nations too? I brought the Philistines out of Crete and led the Armenians out of Kerr. I, the Sovereign Lord, am watching this sinful nation of Israel, and I will uproot it and scatter its people across the earth. Yet, yet I have promised that I will not completely destroy the families of Israel, says the Lord. For I have commanded that Israel be persecuted by other nations, as grain is sifted in a sieve, yet not one true kernel will be lost. But all of the sinners will die by the sword, and those who say nothing bad will happen to us. In that day I will restore the fallen kingdom of David. This is now like a house in ruins, but I will rebuild its walls and restore its former glory. And Israel will possess what they left, what is left of Eden. And all nations I have called to be mine. I, I the Lord, have spoken. And I will do these things. The time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested, and the terraced vineyards on the hills of Israel will drip with the sweet wine. I will bring my exiled people of Israel back from distant lands, and they will rebuild their ruined cities and live in them again. They will plant vineyards and gardens, and they will eat their crops and drink their wine. I firmly plant, and I will firmly plant them in their land that I have given them, says the Lord, and they will never be uprooted again. So as we close out the book of Amos today, as I'm reading through here, again, we see a lot of repeating themes. We see a lot of things that we've seen before, but two bits of it really stuck out to me that I wanted to bring to your attention today. The first of which is when we see, this is one of the first examples that we see God saying that um, he is not just for the people of Israel. It talks about him helping the people of Ethiopia and the Philistines and all of the people of the world, God loves them all. Yes, he has Israel as his chosen people, the people that he revealed himself to and he works through most of all, but this is the first time we see what will come when Jesus' message is brought not only to the Jew but to the Gentile. And it goes on, and it makes me think of this, of we, we as a human race have a history of treating people differently based on race, ethnicity, gender, all of these things we think of people as lesser than. Or, And I'm not saying that everybody thinks of this way, but if you look at human history, that has been an overarching theme. But we see in God's eyes, he loves everyone. And what, what does it mean for us to love in the way that God loves? And that's my first question I want to ask you all today. The second question comes from this. I love how in the entire book of Amos, it's very much talking about the disaster and the ruin that will befall Israel, but the way it chooses to end. It says there will be a day when your crops grow faster than you can harvest them, and your your grapes, the wine that they produce, will be more than you could ever consume, and there's this idea of abundance. 
And I think it can be really easy for us to, when we're living in the hard times, when we're living in the times where things aren't going our way, or in times of confusion, or even these last few months where we've been like, okay, what's going to happen on the news today that's going to define how I live my life? But I think it's also important to remember that there are times of abundance in our lives, times where God will provide for us in a way that we cannot even begin to imagine. And that's my second question, is how do we remember these times of abundance when we're existing in the famine? So those are the questions I have for you today. We have officially made it through the book of Amos. I'm going to pray us out. I'll let you know where we're going to go after this, and then I'll let you get back to your days. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you choose to love each and every one of us as your sons and your daughters. You have no favorites. God, we thank you that we thank you for the abundance and we thank you for the famine, God. Teach us your lessons in those. God, we thank you for your message. It gives us hope. Amen. So we are done with the book of Amos. Um, my original plan was to go through all of the minor prophets, and then I was like, that's a little dour. So we started doing this minor prophet epistle switch off. So we're going to be going to another letter of Paul uh, next week. We're going to be doing the book of Ephesians. It's going to take us six days to get through, so Monday through Saturday taking Sunday off. Hopefully I don't get busy and not able to upload one of these. But next week, we're also wrapping up our Leap of Faith series in the sermon series at church. Um, again, if you haven't watched this week or previous week's messages, please look them up. Uh, a lot of really good stuff has been produced. But after that, we're going to be starting a series on the book of Romans. We started the book of Romans last year in church, if you remember. We did about half of it, and we're going to do the other half. So I thought doing the book of Romans after Ephesians might be a good way to tie into what we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks. So we're going to be doing the book of Ephesians this week, and then next week we're going to start the book of Romans. So that's all I've got for you all. Hope you all are having a great day. Hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying engaged. Uh, if you haven't, please reach out to those around you. Uh, let's get some some person-to-person -person contact. Uh, as things start to get loosened up and we're starting to be able to some of us meet in person again i just encourage you all be safe be smart and take care of yourselves so that's all for me until i see you all again take care